to the representative of the United States. I, the, the, the meeting is resumed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I appreciate your efforts to keep us on track here. This NGO's application has been pending since May 2016. This organization has been repeatedly asked the same questions over and over again, and I appreciate the Iranian delegation's concern about the committee's time um, and would urge them to join us in trying to eliminate this practice of repeatedly asking organizations the same question session after session. The committee is tasked with determining if NGOs will meaningfully contribute to ECOSOC's work. In that regard, HRNK clearly meets the criteria set forth in ECOSOC Resolution 1996-31 and deserves accreditation. We would therefore like to introduce a motion to immediately move to grant consultative status to HRNK. We hope that all committee members will support this decision to grant special consultative status to the organization. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the United States for her statement. Uh, I asked the committee if the committee uh, wishes to recommend this organization consultative status to the ECOSOC. Is there any objection? Iran, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, there is objection. We think uh, that the move by the United, Nation, United States, uh, in fact, undermines the authority of the committee. This is a, a relatively new uh, application introduced to the NGO committee. Um, we uh, view this uh, approach by the United States as unconstructive towards the cause of NGOs and promotion of civil society role in the United Nations work. The provisions of Resolution 1996-31 are very clear and its principles. And we clearly and loudly ask uh, them to be respected. We also uh, ask and invite uh, member states to avoid politicization of the work of the NGO committee uh, more than what it is right now. And as such, uh, we cannot accept this uh, motion. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Iran for his statement. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. Chairman, and quite simply, first of all, I would like not to ask, but to demand from the delegation of the United States of America to stop putting pressure on the Secretariat, on the Secretariat, to stop putting pressure on the Secretariat, to pressure the Secretariat in order to achieve its own goals. This is the major thing I'd like to say. I would also like to appeal to the Secretariat, all of those of you on the podium are working not for the United States of America. You are working for all of us, for each of us, from the 19 members, I would ask you, beginning from the head of the GEO NGO branch to all of those who are here on the podium, you were not voted for by the delegation of the U.S., you were elected by us all. And so all of us, and including me and the Derek of Iran, and we are the ones who take decisions here, not the officials of the U.N. Countries take decisions. You are the ones who are serving us, if I would say that, you are the servitors of the states. I would like to most emphatically ask you to work for our common interests and not for the interests of the delegation of the United States. Once again, I would like to say to the U.S., stop putting pressure on the Secretariat. This is beyond all the norms of decency. Thank you. 
Agradezco al distinguido representante. Agradezco a la I thank the distinguished representative of the United States for her request. I see that an observer state is requesting for the floor, but a vote has been requested. So in according to the rules of procedure, I think we have to proceed with a vote. It's in Article 59 of the rules of procedure of ECOSOC. So even though I would like to be able to give the representative who is asking for the floor, the representative of Iran, on a point of order, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we understand, we have not yet started the voting process. And uh, a vote has been requested, but this, but this uh, meeting and uh, indeed, indeed uh, the, the, the session has not yet started the process. So in our understanding, uh, the observer states and member states still can make their interventions. Thank you. Bien. Yes. I thank the distinguished representative of Iran. There could be some flexibility in this respect, so we'll give the floor to the distinguished representative of the observer state of the Democratic Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, friends. My delegation would like to highlight the DPRK position on this organization, which was proposed by the U.S. delegation. The delegate, uh, the, this NGO has been deferred many, many times in the past because this U.S. Committee for Human Rights in North Korea is not qualified as an NGO. It is a government affiliate which disguises itself as an NGO in the civil society. It is funded and controlled by the U.S. government and carries out the U.S. government hostile, hostile policy against the DPRK, taking issues with the human rights matters. It continues to infringe upon the sovereignty of the DPRK by fabricating the politicized and planned fake information reports on the human rights situation in the DPRK, organizing forums and events of the defectors to slander the government and the people of the DPRK, and even discussing how to destroy the country. In the United States, as you are well aware, grave human rights violations are committed every day, such as killing by gun, rape, sexual and racial violence, women and racial discrimination, insulting other sovereign countries and people. Outside, the U.S. commits war crimes against humanity by bombing and killing innocent civilians, including women and children. If this organization is really interested in the protection and promotion of the human rights, it should concentrate all its efforts to solve these thrilling human rights violations first, as urgently required by the American people. Mr. Chair, since the organization's activities have no relation with the training, promotion, and protection of human rights, and it severely violates the recognized principle of non-politicization, non-selectivity, and impartiality, as well as the spirit and purpose and principles of the UN Charter of the U and the ECOSOC Council Resolution 1996-31, the DPRK delegation strongly rejects the application of the organization and requests the honorable member states of the committee not to grant consultative status to this organization. Thank you. 
Agradezco. I thank the distinguished representative of the People's Republic of Korea. I give the floor to the representative of the European Union. Acordemos. And I'd like to, to recall, we are, please be brief because we are about to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a brief statement to make. <clears throat> the European Union recalls its general statement at the outset of this session of the NGO Committee. In light of the motion placed before the NGO Committee regard, regarding the accreditation of, of the U.S. Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, the EU underlines the importance of applying fair and reasonable treatment to all applicants before this committee. As the EU noted in its general statement, scrutiny of applications for ECOSOC accreditation is an indispensable part of the process, but legitimate organizations should receive accreditation in a timely fashion and should only be required to answer questions that are properly motivated and that are fully in line with the letter and spirit of ECOSOC Resolution 1996-31. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Agradezco al distinguido. I thank the distinguished representative of the European Union for his statement. Distinguished delegate, as we said, we have received a request for a vote in relation to granting status to the U.S. Committee for Human Rights in North Korea. Application in accordance with yes. Uh, Distinguished representative of China. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just wonder whether it's the right time to make a statement to explain the, our position of the vote. Thank you for your question. It will be uh, yeah, the proper time, but uh, if you allow me to read, uh, you, you have. Uh, before the vote, I will request. Uh, in accordance with Rule 59 of the Rules of Procedure of the, ECO, the ECOSOC, we shall now proceed to the vote on whether to recommend to the Council that the consultative status should be granted or should not be granted to U.S. Committee for Human Rights in North Korea. Does any delegation wish to make a statement in explanation of vote before the vote in accordance with Rule 62 of the Rules of Procedure. Yeah, I see uh, first was uh, China and then Russia and... Uh, yeah, but he was first. China and Russia and, and the US. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, we we uh, res uh, we saw that this uh, application uh, uh, dated uh, uh, in May of uh, 2016, and uh, uh, although that uh, this uh, NGO has a uh, uh, response to the answer to, uh, to the uh, questions uh, raised by the committee, but I think that uh, the committee still has uh, uh, some other questions, maybe. Uh, so I think uh, we are not in a time to uh, grant uh, this uh, NGO the consultative status at th this time. Uh, so um, uh, for China, we will uh, appeal to, we, we, we would like to uh, uh, keep the solidarity of the committee and uh, if there should be a vote, China will vote no. Uh, to the motion made by the representative of the U.S. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of China. Now, in my list, I have Russian Federation, U.S., Uruguay, but I, I want to remind the distinguished representative of the United States that when you ask for a vote, you cannot uh, give explanations before the vote. So, Russian Federation, please. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, too, would like to make a clar minor clarification as to how we will vote. Perhaps this might be useful for some of us. Before I say how we will vote, I would like to draw attention to the delegates of the U.S. and the European Union who have just spoken and, say, and said that many questions were asked of this organization and that they were repeated and although any time is ripe for us to take a decision, 
I would like to say to the U.S. delegation and to the delegation of the European Union, take a look at the other organizations. Just take a look at the American NGO Parents and Friends of Ex-Gays and Gays. It's already been before us since May of 2014. There's, is there any desire of this delegation to put it for a vote? Or the delegation of the European Union, for that matter? You don't want to? Well, bearing in mind this, and in view of the fact of what's going on, for a year and a half now only, the committee has had the application of this organization, which we've asked to have a vote on. I would like to take a look at the political aspects. I would like to take a look at the fact that the Europe Russian Federation will vote not just against because of the hypocrisy involved, but against having this organization receiving consultative status. And I would very much ask all the independent countries, all delegations, to join with us and with China in voting against, and not just here in the committee, but to in April of this uh, year in the meeting and coordination of the ECSOC, the voters there against it as well, if there is to be an attempt to have it go through. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation for his explanation of vote. I give the floor to Uruguay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uruguay understand that this NGO complies with the requirements in Resolution 1996-31 to recommend special consultative stay status, and it is not right to reject it, and I think it should have status in ECOSOC. Thank you, Uruguay. And if there are no other members who wish to explain their votes before the vote, we will continue with the procedure. Commencing the actual process of voting, according to Rule 63 of the Rules of Procedure, no representative may, may interrupt the voting except on point of order in connection with the actual process of voting. And then the vote will begin with the delegation of China. And I request the Secretariat to conduct the vote. China. Members that are in favor of the granting of the consultative status to the NGO should indicate yes. Those members that are not in favor of the granting of the consultative status to the NGO should indicate no. I wish to clarify further that if the majority of the members vote yes, a recommendation will be made to ECOSOC that the consultative status should be granted to the NGO. If the majority of the members vote no, a recommendation will be made to ECOSOC that the consultative status should not be granted to the NGO and the application will be closed if ECOSOC approves the recommendation. So with that in mind, please indicate your vote, China. Mike for China, please. No. Cuba? No. Greece? Mike for Greece, please. Yes. Not. India. We would abstain. Iran. No. Israel. Yes. Mauritania. Absent. Absent. Nicaragua. No. Pakistan. No. Russian Federation. 
Нет. No. South Africa. No. Sudan. We would abstain. Turkey. Yes. United States of America. Yes. Uruguay. Si. Yes. Venezuela. No. Azerbaijan. Absent. Burundi. No. Dear colleagues, uh, the result of the vote is as follows. Uh, total of votes, 16. In favor, 5. Against, 9. To abstain and to absent. Uh, the recommendation to the ECOSOC is that the consultative status should not be granted. Uh, to the NGO that, that has therefore been adopted. We have thus concluded the voting procedure. Does any delegation wish to make a statement in explanation of vote after the vote? I see none. Oh, yes, Nicaragua. Tiene la palabra. Nicaragua, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. My delegation would like to make a brief statement with regard to the vote, which has just been held. I wanted to be clear that our delegation has voted no in granting status to this organization based on the fact that it is a new organization reaffirming the right all members can continue to consult and ask questions. And till all of the responses which are necessary are provided. As a Russian colleague has said, there are a number of organizations who have been requesting this their status and haven't obtained it. Many delegations um, have asked for uh, state, certain status, and we have not asked for a hasty uh, decision. And that is why I want it to be recorded that we have voted against this organization. I thank the representative of Nicaragua for her explanation of vote, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to make an explanation of vote after the vote. Uh, we believe that the uh, NGO which is in question has not exhausted uh, or its uh, uh, opportunities uh, for being considered. And we consider that it's uh, a hasty decision. Uh, member states have the right to ask the questions until, and the NGO could, you know, uh, uh, ask for a vote uh, after it has exhausted all its options. So, basing on this fact that the NGO has not exhausted its uh, all the opportunities, uh, we voted no for this organization. Thank you. I thank I thank the distinguished representative of Pakistan for his explanation of vote after the vote, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, sir. I simply wish to clarify one technical aspect. How many votes were cast? You said 18, 5, 9, 2 abstentions, and one not participating. 18. Don't we have 19 members in the committee? Or is that not the case? Gracias por su pregunta. Thank you for your question, Russian Federation. Maybe there was an error in counting. But there were five in favor, nine against, and two abstentions, and three who were absent. So there were the 19 votes. 
I apologize <coughs> for not having counted correctly. And if anybody wishes <coughs> to take the floor to explain their vote after the vote, they have this possibility. Otherwise, we'll continue. Uh, veo que nadie I see that none of the members are requesting the floor. Therefore, we will continue with the agenda. Ahora, eh, para un... Uh, <coughs> Para realizar una declaración general. Now to make a general statement, I'm going to give the floor first to the representative of the People's Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Perdón, los miembros en primero. No había visto. The members first. And in the screen first, apologize. We have India first, and then the United States. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, just a question whether a signed voting sheet, record sheet, will be available about this, this voting process, uh, like it is available for other committees. Thank you. Uh, it will be included in the report of the committee. It will be available today, or it will be it will be part of the report. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm being told it's going to be part of the report in the end, not today. Uh, it, of course, y you have available uh, our data. Uh, if you want to come over here, you you can have a copy of this, but. Uh, then uh, I have U.S. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had hoped that all members of this committee would have upheld the duties of membership and voted to grant this fully deserving non-governmental organization consultative status today. And we regret that once again this committee has demonstrated the deeply politicized and anti-civil society or, um, orientation that it holds, and that countries that themselves are hostile to civil society in their own domestic context continue to carry those views forward through their membership here in the NGO committee. This is deeply unfortunate. For that reason, we will be pursuing a vote in the full ECOSOC committee to reverse the decision of this committee, and we will continue our delegation and those that cherish the right of civil society to participate at home, in our own domestic setting, as well as here in the United Nations. We will continue to fight for their rights here in this committee. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the U.S. Uh, if no other member state, uh, give the floor to the representative of <laughs> Democratic <laughs> Popular Republic of Korea. I see the Russian Federation first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, too, wish we'd like to say a couple of words after the vote. I'm very pleased that the committee is a healthy but not a sick part a healthy part of our UN society and that the committee dealt with this as to see where the truth is and where the people need support and where our NGO, which is just a weapon of a state or several states and receives money from them, is carrying out their work. So I'm part of the state policy and I would call upon all members of the committee to see to it that the decision that was taken by, at the committee uh, to work with their regional groups so that the decision which was adopted in the committee would also be reaffirmed in the ECOSOC level because we need to have truth and not hypocrisy to triumph. And I think that will be supported by civil society in the United States, which wants to be healthy, clean, and not hypocritical. Thank you.
Agradezco a... I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation and give the floor to the distinguished representative of the People's Democratic DPRK. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The DPRK delegation would like to express its, its sincere appreciation to the member states which expressed no and the abstention to the application of the NGO, which deferred the NGO once again, as it is not qualified to deserve the consultative status of the United Nations from its own politically motivated mandate and its own activities. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea for his statement. Distinguished members of the committee, does anybody else wish to have the floor? The representative of Cuba has the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My delegation is speaking, bearing in mind what I've just heard from the statement made by the delegate of the United States. I think that the interpretation is excellent, and I would like to thank the interpreters, but we've heard something that the members of this committee have complied with their um, work of giving consultative status to this NGO. First of all, first of all, there were diff there were, my delegation is obliged to explain and state what its position is, bearing in mind that this we don't want an idea which is totally wrong as to the functioning of this committee be. Uh, uh, would occur. First, the committee doesn't give, but it recommends to ECOSOC, and ECOSOC can review the decision of the committee. Second, the obligation of this committee is to make sure that the organizations which apply for consultative status uh, uh, comply with 1996-31 stroke and the Charter of the UN and are in line with the United Nations. And this committee, therefore, has the right to verify and has the obligation, the right and the obligation to verify that organizations comply with these requirements particular, and not interfere in against the state nor interfere in the internal affairs of states. Therefore, with the under, uh, we believe what happened in the vote here was just complying with rev exhaustively reviewing every application which was submitted to this committee. Therefore, we request that this be recorded because the message which has been conveyed would, is wrong. I thank the representative of Cuba for his statement. I don't know whether any of the remaining members wish to take the floor. If not, I invite you to continue to analyze our work program in accordance to what we have decided. And we'll continue with the deferred applications. And the next organization to consider is Universal Rights Group. Thank you. Si tiene la palabra la distinguida representante. I give the floor to the United States. I'm, I apologize for my delegation taking the floor again, but just to respond to a few of the comments we've heard today um, with regards to the U.S. delegation's comment about seeking um, the reversal of this uh, recommendation in ECOSOC. This committee has seen consistently that ECOSOC has sent it very clear guidance that by reversing these recommendations that have been sent to ECOSOC, that this committee has not lived up to what it's, it is supposed to be doing and upheld 1996-31. So I think that as members of the committee, we need to 
think about that as we examine each of these recommendations and take that seriously because history has shown us in the past several years that ECOSOC has sent very clear guidance to this committee in terms of not taking on board the recommendations that have been sent to it. And we have faith that ECOSOC will once again send that same very clear message to this committee again this year. Thank you. Thank the distinguished representative of the United States for her statement, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Uh, Thank you. Once again, sir, I've heard some words just now from the representative of the United States, and quite frankly, in my head, it seems that these words are some type of note of lack of respect but how could I explain this to in the committee? There are 19 members. The United States is one uh, 19th. Now, a legal so-called decision, if they don't like a legal decision, if you've gone through all the appeals process and you don't like it, you still have to go along with this and respect this decision. 19 members in the committee, so it very much like the United States to have a delegation which would not say oh, we don't want our uh, votes to be taking precedence over yours. We would like to be equal among equals. I would like such a United States to be here if it's not the case and to speak in that way and not that they have their will prevail and that they're the first among equals. But if they take such a decision, I would like to see the United States which would respect such a decision and I re well recall in your American culture, that there is a saying, and I'll say it in English, and then in Russian, and then in English, the great power has great responsibility. Great responsibility. Great power comes with great responsibility. So, power we see, but frank, frankly, we see less and less respectability here. Thank you. Thank the representative of the Russian Federation. Give the floor to the representative of Cuba. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My delegation considers that what um, the delegation of the United States has said was right, and so that it suffices to look at the reports which are produced annually, and you see the number of organizations analyzed. And all of these organizations are submitted to ECOSOC, and constantly ECOSOC reaffirms this. But there were examples where the, an organization was subject to the vote in this committee, and it was ratified again by ECOSOC. So let's say that we have more than 250 new applications every year, and every uh, uh, ECOSOC ratifies the decision of this committee to give consultative status. So uh, we should not think that ECOSOC against this committee. On the contrary, this is a serious committee, and the recommendations which it makes, 99% uh, of the applications are ratified. You only have to look at the statistic. You have to see how many have consultative uh, status recommended by this committee. So even if they wish to under, undermine the seriousness that each of the members of this committee has, are doing this job, my delegation expresses an object, energetic rejection of it. It is a serious, responsible committee and respects the um, United Nations Charter. And I give the floor to the Cuba for their statement. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Venezuela. Thank you. Chairman, we would like to refer also to what the delegate of the United States has said. And not only does it lack respect to the other countries who belong to this committee, we all know, and we've witnessed this, that the delegate of the United delegates of the United States made many comments about many NGOs. Their comments have been respected by the rest of the members of this committee, and in no case 
was an observation or that attitude of a country means that it, we, the members of the committee, are against civil society. Thank you. Thank you for your statement, Venezuela. If there were no further statements, we can continue to look at the organizations which were analyzing to see whether status is granted or not. So now we are going to